ora e hoa, hello my friends, we are back for another daily demo and today we're doing, that's right Katie Kia, we're doing art. Now Katie Kia loves to join for art so she's here again and she's going to be helping us do something called geometric abstraction. Now before I explain what that is, I'll tell you what you need for today's lesson and then we can do our karakia. Okay. So today, all you need is paper, any size, any colour, and pens or pencils or crayons or anything you like to draw with. That's it. Just make sure that you have one black, any black colour. So black pencil, black pen, black vivid, black paint even, doesn't matter. Okay, it's time for our karakia. Mahunga kiraro, heads down. Kia inoi tato, Manawa mai te mauri nuku. Manawa mai te mauri rangi, ko te mauri keo he mauri tipua, ka pakaru mai te pō, tau mai te mauri, haumie huie taikie. Kia ora, ok, it's time to get started with our geometric abstraction. Now remember, if you see cheeky bee anywhere in the room, call out and let me know, because he won't stop hiding from me every single video. Fun game, huh? Okay, I'm going to explain to you a little bit about what geometric abstraction is. So let's take a little look at some really cool geometric abstraction artists. Which one is your favorite? Geometric abstraction is abstract art. Now, abstract art is art that's not trying to be something. It's not trying to show a cat or show a picture of a hill or a sunset. It's just using shapes and colors and forms and marks to make really cool effects. Sometimes you might have something in mind. So you might be thinking about an ocean and your abstract art might be using blues and greens and have similar shapes and marks to the ocean but it's not trying to look like exactly like the ocean so geometric abstraction is a type of abstract art that's not trying to be something geometric abstract art plays with geometric forms now geometric forms are shapes and lines so you can see in all of these pictures the artists have been playing with shapes and lines in lots of fun and interesting ways straight lines, curved lines, circles, squares. What other shapes can you see? One geometric abstract artist is Milan Mikusic. Milan Mikusic is an artist who is a New Zealander. Unfortunately, he's passed away now, but he made amazing geometric abstract art that was created using lots and lots and lots of little squares and rectangles. Here are two more examples of his art. Now, even though it's abstract art and it's not trying to look like something, he actually had something in mind when he made these artworks. Can you guess what he had in mind when he painted these? Hmm. If you guessed a map, then you're correct. He was thinking about the London underground maps. So all the trains that run under the ground in London, which is a city, he loved how they looked with all of their colors and their lines and the shapes that were made when all of the lines cross. Can you see how his work looks a little bit like a London train map? You might have been to Wellington before, and if you have, you might have gone to Te Papa. Te Papa is the museum down in Wellington, and Milan Mikusic actually designed a whole window artwork of lots of different squares of different colors. Have you seen this before? Some of Milan's work was a lot less neat and tidy. Here are some examples of some rougher, messier works where he played with shapes and lines. These are two of my favorites. These works by Milan Mikusic were very similar to another artist called 
Douglas Oburn. Look at all of the movement in this artwork. Your eyes jump across the page looking at all of the different shapes and lines that are created. How many colours can you see? Piet Mondrian is a famous geometric abstract artist. You might have seen something a bit like this before. Piet Mondrian often just used a few colours. So here he's used black, white, yellow, red and blue. Here are some more works by Piet Mondrian that are quite different. The one on the right reminds me of Milan Mikusic. There are other kinds of artists who play with geometric abstraction and some of those are stained glass artists who work with glass that has been coloured. Look at all of the interesting shapes and colours and lines you can see in Anahita Hisami's work. Tom Fruin is another geometric abstract stained glass artist who makes houses out of stained glass that have lots of different shapes and lines, just like in geometric abstraction. So today we're going to look at making rhythm. Now you might think that rhythm is a word to do with music and it is, but rhythm can also be to do with art. Rhythm in an artwork means that there's movement in the artwork. It makes your eyes dance across the page or it makes it seem like it's moving by itself. You can make a movement in your artwork by using shapes or colors or lines in really interesting ways. Now the way that we're going to make rhythm today is by playing with shapes. So what different shapes can we use? What different sizes can we make our shapes? Should we make our shapes messy or tidy? And what happens when we overlap our shapes, when we put them on top of each other? Do little shapes appear in between? We're going to look at how repeating shapes over and over of different sizes can give our art rhythm or movement. I'm really excited too. Kapai, so we're going to get started on creating our very own geometric abstract artwork. So I'm going to set myself up and you do the same. All you need to do is get your pens ready and I'd like you to start with the colour black and set up your paper however you like to draw or paint. Off you go. Now you can do your artwork any way that you like. You can have it this way. This way is called portrait because it's often the way up that we have our paper if we want to do a picture of someone's face, which is called a portrait. Or you can do it landscape, which is this way. The reason they call it landscape is because people can draw a landscape or a natural environment really easily if they have lots of space sideways. So you could do lots of hills or you could do ocean. It's a little bit easier than having it portrait, which suits faces a bit better. But we're not doing faces or landscapes, so it doesn't matter which way up you have your paper. Okay, I'd like you to get your black pen. We're going to have a little bit of a play around. You can choose if you want to use a ruler, and if you want to make it really perfect and neat and tidy, that's great. But I like to do mine messy, so I'm not going to use a ruler, I'm just going to do it freehand, which means just using my hand without a ruler. Now we're going to play with shapes. It's up to you if you want to just use squares and rectangles, or if you want to branch out and try different shapes. But let's start off by doing a shape somewhere in our page. Now. I want you to forget about how it looks. I don't want you to think, oh, I need this to look perfect. I just want you to do any shape of any size anywhere on your page. Off you go. Okay, looks like I'm doing a square. That's what came to my hand. So mine's quite bold. It's a little bit messy because I haven't used a ruler and I really like that. Now, if we look at some of the artists that we saw before, one of my favorite artists is Milan Mikusic. So what he often does is he gets his pencil or his pen and he overlaps a shape on top of another shape. 
and a little shape appears in the middle. What do I mean? Well, have a look. I'm going to do a rectangle somewhere on top of that square and see if you can spot a new shape that appears. Can you spot a new shape? That's right, a new rectangle has appeared in here. Interesting. I'd like you to try overlapping a shape. Okay, I'm just going to keep on going, playing with shape to try and give rhythm and movement to my artwork. So I think I might start adding circles and triangles and other shapes as well. So you can do the same thing at home. Can you see how all these little shapes are appearing inside? So I've got a little triangle in between my circle and my triangle just here. I've got a teeny little rectangle in here in between all these shapes. I've got like a curvy triangle shape in here. Lots of things are appearing, lots of strange and interesting shapes. Now remember you don't just have to do normal shapes, squares, rectangles, triangles, etc. You could do a funny curvy shape that ends in an unexpected way like this. It's almost like a backwards letter C. Or you could do a squiggle like this. It's completely up to you. So I'm going to finish off with my overlapping shapes and you do the same at home and then we're going to add some colour. Okay, I'm happy with how my shapes look. So I'm gonna start adding color now. So pause me if you're not finished adding your own shapes and press play again when you're ready to add color. Make sure that you're adding lots of movement and interesting shapes in there. If you've chosen to be really neat and tidy with the ruler and to just use squares and rectangles, that's great as well. You're doing more of a Piet Mondrian style artwork. Your artwork is yours, so I don't want it to look like mine. Okay, I've got all my colors laid out and I'm just gonna choose maybe three or four colors to work with. That's because I want to make some movement and some rhythm using colors too. So I might want to have a little bit of red down here and then make your eye move up to the red here and then move up to some red in the corner. I'm trying to make your eye move around my page. So I'm just going to pick a few colors for now so it doesn't get too busy and I can always add more colors later. So the colors I'd like to add are... These four here. I'd like to do like a swampy green, a deep blue, a light yellowy orange and a nice violet purple. So I'm going to get started. You can do this along with me. So pick your colors, maybe three or four to start with. I'm going to get my purple and I'm going to pick which shapes I want to be purple so that I'm making your eye move across my page. So I know that I want a big shape down here to be purple. Actually, maybe that big circle. Now, I'm not going to colour in the whole circle. Every time a new shape comes into my circle, I'm going to leave it white so that I can put a different colour in there. Okay, let's have a look. Now, as you can see, I like to outline where I'm going to colour in first. So I go all around the outline to remind myself what I'm colouring in. You don't have to do that. That's just an artistic choice that I've made. Now you might want yours to be really messy and coloured in in all directions. You might want it to be really neat and to be doing it very carefully. 
You might have paint, which you're colouring in in a way that you choose, or you might have pencil. So you can do this in any way you want. Maybe you want it to be messy and kind of going over the edges. Okay, I've got purple in one corner. I want the purple to travel across the page to make some movement. So what's a shape I could colour in around here? I might do a few little in-between shapes to make your eye move up and follow that purple. Okay, my purple is traveling all the way up to the other corner. I might try a different color now. What else had I chosen? I think I might do some of this yellow. Okay, I think I'd like my yellow to travel the other way, to go from this corner to that corner. Time for a new colour. Okay, time for my green. Okay, I think I'd like to add a slightly lighter yellow and a slightly lighter blue to my artwork because I've already got yellow and blue but I want to play with the different shades. And finally, I'd like to do a bright pop of red and pink, just to really pop out and finish off that rhythm, that movement. Okay, and there you have it. That's my geometric abstract art. So I've tried to get your eye to Follow the colours in different directions and end with a big pop or start with a big pop of pink and red. So, so hopefully yours looks completely different to this. You might have used different colours, different shapes. You might have decided not to use a dark black outline and just used a really light pencil so that at the end you can't even see the lines. It's totally up to you how you want to do things. I really look forward to seeing some photos of some of your geometric abstract art. You can send them to me or your teacher at the address above. Oh, Katie here is really excited about the artwork we've been doing. Okay, now don't go away because in the next video, there is a different way that you can do geometric abstraction that's a little more similar to some of the messier Milan Makusic and some of the Douglas Oburn, where you have the whole page coloured in and it almost looks a bit like an optical illusion. Your eyes get a bit confused. So if you'd like to do some really fun art playing with lines, come and watch the next video. So press on next now. Okay, kaki te anō everyone. See you next time.